Hello, uh, my name's Penelope Shuttle and I'd like to send my congratulations to Autumn and Richard on the 10th anniversary of Reliquai Journal. It's been a joy and a privilege to be published by them in the journal over the years and perhaps an even bigger joy to read the wonderful pieces of work that have appeared in the journal. I'm going to read a few poems that have appeared over the years. I'm going to begin with a few micro-poems from a work in progress titled Retrieved Data. I send my thought by an underland route from one end of the county to the other, cavern by cavern. My thought travels via the subterranean sublime. Cobweb maps of the five shadowy regions of ancient Britain. Red ruins of an abbey in the veil of the deadly nightshade. Drift light of the long evening. The daytime bat of St. Devereux ghosting across the nave. Nine-fingered monkey cut into the arid plains of Peru, complete proof of eternity. The next poem is taken from um, Cornwall, where I've lived since 1970. And it's, it's set in Tregarthon, which is in the far west of Cornwall, um, on West Penwith. Dusk coming on. Tregarthen, November. Old granite boulders draw in their Penwith horns, saddle rock, stone in the pool of water, stone with the furze bush, stone west of the whole bridge. The horizons drawn in blue and pink as by a map maker's unerring hand. Above roofless chapel and muddy spring, jackdaws squabble and recce a roost. Here's a church of the twilight hours, gone wild in the wooded vale, its lintel split and thrawn with ivy and hawthorn. Dwarfish elder hunkers down. A step away, the watch hills. No stars yet. And uh, to conclude, um, two short sections from, again, a long sequence, um, which was written on a retreat at Swarthmore House. Swarthmore House is a Quaker retreat house at Open to All and has a long history in Quakerism. George Fox preached from an upper window. The gardens are really beautiful. And this is where I wrote this poem. A gabble of finches from the silver birch a mesmerism of blackbirds in the big oaks. He has a lovely thinking song, the blackbird in the silver birch. His notes come wild and true, then he's silent till he calls again. He's hidden in those shivery leaves, singing as a healing wound sings. His here and gone song scuds on the breeze towards the beck, and though just as lovely, grows less adjacent to me, and so I let it go.